All right, good day everybody, Steve Prosbrowski here. Welcome to episode 72 of Reach for the Firefighter Badge. Episode 72 is gonna discuss more about the fire department written examination, providing tips for success on test day or game day. So this will be part one. As a reminder, my two websites, code3firetraining.com and shabofire.com have lots of great free information on there to help you be the best firefighter candidate that you can be. Also, these webinars are based on two of the three books I've had published, both of which are available off my websites, and both of which that can help you also be the best that you can be, because you can never get enough information to prepare. All right, let's, let's talk about written tests a little bit. We've already discussed in episode 37, we discussed pretty much the basics of written tests. Uh, most departments require written tests. And again, go back to episode 37 to find out more about the written test and what to expect as usually the first step in the fire department hiring process of most departments. Um, now it's time to offer some tips for success when it comes to test day. So on things to think about prior to the test, you know, everybody, every one of us is different. We all handle stress differently. We all handle sleep differently, but you know what? My suggestion, ensure you're well rested for test day because you wanna be able to be at your best. Um, ensure you had a light meal that will cover you for up to three hours because it's not uncommon for the 100 question multiple choice test to maybe take two to three hours or that's the amount of time they give you maximum. I mean, I remember one of the benefits obviously of taking as many tests as you qualify for is you tend to see a lot of the same written tests over and over again and you get pra good practice. When I was testing in the early 90s, I know it seems like forever, long time ago, but there was only about five different versions of written tests out there, five different versions. So when you take as many tests as you qualify for, and I took over 50 different fire department tests, you started seeing the same tests. I got to the point where I was getting 100% on a couple of the versions because I had seen them so much. And those, er those ones that I was missing that I knew I was missing, I made sure that I found the answers out by talking to others and everything else. But anyway, I got down to about, I could, I could get that thing down to about 30 minutes, which was pretty, I don't want to say embarrassing for some, but you know, I had it down. I mean, I, did, I just had it memorized. When I saw that version of the test, because again, there was different versions, and I remember seeing that version, it's like, well, I got this one nailed, and it just <laughs> make sure I obviously take my time, dot my eyes, cross my T's, but I didn't need two and a half, three hours. I was in and out in 30 minutes. It was just one of those things. And again, I don't say that to brag, but it was a nice feeling when you saw that written test. And wow, okay, I've already prepared for it. I've already seen it, so let's just make sure I do it correctly here. But also the point is, 30 minutes or even a couple hours, you don't want to have your stomach growling in front of everybody else. On the flip side, you probably don't want to, how do I say this tactfully, respectfully, you probably don't want to go grab a big breakfast burrito right before your interview. And then obviously there may, no, there may be no bathrooms or very limited bathrooms. I mean, typically during a written test, they prefer that you don't get up at all because you're supposed to take the written test. And obviously, you should be getting up only when you're done to bring your test materials to the front. And sometimes they'll say, if you do have to go to the bathroom, try not to, but if you do bring all your test materials up so we can make sure you're not leaving the room with anything, it's just a hassle. And again, you try your best not to have to use the bathroom if at all possible. Um, know where you're going in advance. Uh, make sure you read the instructions. Um, it could be a lot of different locations, maybe a high school gymnasium. I've seen LA Forum, the sports arena where the Lakers and the Kings used to play was where LA County used to do theirs. I don't know if LA County Fire still uses that facility, but you know, know where you're going in advance, especially on game day, plan for traffic if necessary, plan for accidents. Don't wait till last minute to get there. Get there with plenty of time to spare, park and be comfortable and relaxed. Also, if there's a study guide available, there are occasionally departments that say, hey, we offer a free study guide or for the price of whatever, the investment of whatever, you can go to the website and obtain a, a study guide from the company that makes the test. The fire department themselves usually do not create the test. Pretty much virtually every fire department will contract with a private company that does this for a living to make sure the tests are validated and to make sure that there's, they're pretty much bulletproof from challenges and legalities. But if there's a study guide available, by all means, get it, because there may be information that is on that test based on that study guide. Also, bring things that are required of you. In that letter that they give you via email, via US Postal Service, whatever it is, it'll usually say the who, when, where, what, why, you know, where to report to, what time to report to, what to bring. At the, I mean, they may say bring this letter for proof of, um, I guess, acceptance. 
they'll probably definitely say also bring a current valid driver's license so we can prove it's you because you may go, why does that matter? Because there's been apparently people in the past that weren't good at written tests, they'd have a stand in. And again, if they didn't check the ID, who would know the difference? Yep, Steve Przbrowski here. So make sure you have your ID, your letter, and anything else. Um, they, may, they may also tell you what not to bring. Obviously, don't bring a lot of crap. I mean, you probably don't need a backpack because there's nothing to study. Mm -hmm. Also, don't bring things that are not required unless they're asked. If they're asked, excuse me. They may say on there, do not bring anything but your driver's license and yourself, obviously. Um, so follow instructions because it's critical. They may allow you to bring water, may not allow you water, who knows. Okay, that was just some basic best practices. So in the next episode, excuse me, not the next episode because this is episode 72, but in a number of episodes away in episode 82, we're gonna continue discussing tips for success on game day when you're taking your next fire department written examination. All right, until the next time, please don't hesitate to reach out. If I can be of any assistance, take care, be safe, and thank you as always for the gift of your time. I sincerely appreciate it. All right, have a great day, everybody.